little maddening to her uh, consistently is that her colleagues, the other anthropologists or the other archaeologists, know all this stuff, and they don't draw the conclusions, you know, because they're radical and they're obvious, and uh, you know, you can point all this stuff out, and so what? Uh, are we so determined to live in this way? I mean, do, do we, can we learn nothing? You know, to, to put it mildly, from the past, or that that would be part of it. That life doesn't have to be like this. We don't have to keep going closer and closer to the edge and over the edge. Well, and another thing I think that might be worth saying too, I think there are, there are some people, and even some anti-civilization people, who say, well, there's, uh, what about all this stuff? That's putting a lot of eggs in one basket. Uh, but I, one thing that I found very interesting, and I, which I agree with, is that even if somehow all this turned out to be false, what if somehow, and I, I don't, I really don't think at this point it's going to happen, uh, it's really not, not at all, the, but what if it did happen? What, what if we found out that people were actually really awful and bloodthirsty and killing and raping and it was not this rosy picture at all, that's baloney, you know, it's all been overturned somehow, but uh, it, it seems to me that, to the people that uh, made this point, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter in the sense that we would still have the same. Uh, we would still have the same goals or aims. In other words, I would say one would be face-to-face -face society, which was called banned society, which some people say is the original anarchist society, and in fact the only anarchist society. You know, which didn't have hierarchy and inequality, didn't have politicians or any any of the rest of it. It was. It was, that, it was that direct and unmediated where people take responsibility for themselves as they had to in that kind of life world. Uh, so, so I think one could say uh, quite sincerely that what, what, whatever the record is, this is the world that we want as, as the, uh, the folks in Pennsylvania, the Feral Edge people say, this is the world we want and we'll fight for it. So anyway, I think that's uh, worth talking about, that the idea of community and, and these other touchstones that everything in mass society and modernity is taking us farther and farther from all the time. Well, I think uh, maybe I'll just, uh, go on, I've gone on longer than I thought I would. Uh, this is a workshop, sorry if I went too far. Maybe we could just start to... Uh, I just have a question regarding terms, maybe. How do you, how do you, like, how do you define civilization to say that you're anti-civilization? I mean, do you define civilization as like modern industrial life or many, many ways of life people have lived regardless of uh, where they are in the world? So how exactly the terms do you... Oh, thanks for asking that. Uh, the terms need to be made clear, that's for sure. Well, domestication. As Jared Diamond said, Domestication, which is basically the shift to agriculture, is the worst mistake humans have ever made. And that is the shift to, and all of this stuff is before domestication, which is about roughly 9,000 years ago in many places, more or less simultaneously, leading to civilization very quickly, almost immediately in a relative sense. That shift from taking what nature gives to extorting from nature, to dominating and colonizing nature, at ever deeper levels. Uh, you know, as Paul Shepard said, what starts with agriculture goes right on through to nanotechnology and uh, cloning and biotech and all that. It's, a, it's, a, it's implicit in the first step, is the way he put it. It's, it's an unbroken chain. If you don't break it, that's, you just keep going in that direction of greater and greater control. And that control is, is of course, generalized. I mean, it's, it's surveillance. I mean, it's, it's all of that if you want to, you know, look at, look at the other related parts. But it's essentially the, uh, the domestication part, I think, is, is the real turning point. Right now in the literature, uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of attention to sedentism as well, that, uh, that that's pretty decisive and operative. When people start, stop moving around, then you get more uh, estrangement and, and negative things in society. Uh, and I think that's that's true too. I don't think it's as decisive or primary as domestication, though. 
myself. So civilization is what is based on that control. And private property comes directly, for one, for one instance, from domestication. I did the work here, so I'm going to fence it off, stay away, rather than gathering, you know, collecting, uh, not a, a non-territorial outlook. Then you, you start immediately with, with, with the main features of modernity, really. If I can just create real fast, uh, I, I know it happened that yes, agriculture became modern control of everything, but uh, there are examples of society that limited themselves willingly. And uh, one of them, I think, is the Mohawk community. And the other one is like traditional Buddhist uh, theories that share everything. Even though they do agriculture, they limit themselves in their needs and how they do it because they're Spanish. So personally, I do think there's a way to do it to have agriculture, limit it, and ourselves limit ourselves to even what you would define as civilization to achieve it. So I think it's really possible to do it. Well, that's another instructive point. That's a good point. You know, yeah. agriculture, you know, we think of industrial monoculture. Of course, there are other forms. And, and I think horticulture, uh, it's not necessarily unstable. It doesn't necessarily lead to full-out agriculture. Uh, and there's... Uh, Kevin Tucker writes about that, for instance. Uh, I think one good example of that, and you, you mentioned you mentioned uh, things as well, but say forest forest horticulture, in some places where we would not be able to tell where the quote garden is uh, and where the where the forest is, it's not you know it's it's not a it isn't so set off you know and so in other words there are these. Uh, areas where uh, where do you draw the line if you will you know what what is the uh, what is the real differentiation it's not that simple that's true I'm I'm, uh, I'm reducing things to make a point I guess but you're right it's uh, and, and there are forms of what we would call agriculture that are anti-domestication such as Fukuoka the one straw revolution a fabulous book uh, which doesn't require uh, uh, tilling, for, for one thing, doesn't require plowing, you know, and, and permaculture has that radical edge too. So there are techniques that uh, we will need to use to, to, if we're talking about moving out of the the place of dependency on dom on domestication as a practice and as a category. Uh, there's something like more important than you doing that uh, really. Uh, how can you pass, like, how can you pass from this society with six billion people to a not together for example? This is a genocide. I call it a genocide. I think you six billion to one hundred uh, million? What 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 is it? Well how um, can you do this? In my in my point of view, it's not possible. Well, uh, maybe it is possible. But as I said before, it's nobody's talking about nobody's talking about uh, like throwing a switch somehow. It would be, it would have to be a, a, a process involving a whole lot of things, a whole lot of dismantling, a whole lot of replacing it with something else, going in a different direction. That is not. I don't think it's necessarily impossible. Well, some people are learning primitive skills. Some people are learning uh, the skills that we all once had, for example. And, and it was just mentioned, the, uh, the people on the land who are trying to work out in terms of practical experiments or alternatives using permaculture or Fukuoka or in, in where, where I'm from, uh, several uh, places trying to draw from uh, the indigenous experience. What, what some people call edible landscapes. You know, in other words, a, a different approach to sustaining ourselves, to feeding ourselves. I mean, there's a, an enormous challenge there. I'm not trying to, if it sounds like I'm glossing over it, I'm not. I mean, as I said, it may be, maybe, it, uh, maybe it can happen. But it, it seems to me what we have is, is kind of inescapable need 
to try.